Several weeks ago, I published a video on this site discussing why I no longer call myself a Christian. Instead, I refer to myself as a follower of the teachings of Jesus. And I explained in that video that because Christian nationalism has become the public face of Christianity in the United States, and that Christian nationalism is really associated with white supremacy, misogyny, homophobia, an anti-scientific perspective, and, and uh, a really strong bias against immigrants, that I no longer want to be associated with any of that. But instead, I find meaning for my life and for my spiritual path in the teachings of Jesus. And today I want to talk about why I find such depth within the teachings of Jesus. As I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. So some people would probably say, you're Christian because you were born in the United States, your parents were Christian, so you're Christian. That's not wrong. You know, the religion we're born into, the culture, the family, they shape our identity in, in very strong ways. And I've talked about that elsewhere in other videos. But, you know, I've also studied great traditions of the world and, and worked with teachers from those traditions and have practiced Buddhism and have explored Native American spirituality and, and used to teach in a, in a um, Hindu ashram and all kinds of things, and I still come back to the teachings of Jesus. That's where I find depth in my life. And you may say, well, you know, we don't even know if Jesus existed. That's true. What we know about Jesus is really from the gospel. There is not a historic record that really refers to Jesus. The first century historian Josephus makes mention of him, but it's just a quick mention. And there's nothing in the Roman record, but the Romans didn't keep records on the people they occupied, the lands they occupied. They focused on Roman citizens. So what do we make of the historic Jesus? Well, we don't know, but we know that there's this body of teaching, and it's that body of teaching that I relate to. There are three key elements in that body of teaching that I continue to go back to that are foundational for me. The first is Jesus talking in the Gospels repeatedly that the realm of God, or as it's often translated, the kingdom of God is in us and it's here. It's all around us. The teaching of Jesus is about the here and now. It's about our lives as we're living them. Many people today think that Christianity is about an afterlife and whether you're going to heaven or hell. That's not what the focus of the teachings of Jesus is. Jesus talks about life here and now. The realm of God is here. Our images of heaven and hell come from Dante and from other writers. Jesus was a first century Jew. First century Jews didn't believe in an afterlife. Most Jews today still don't. Jesus did make reference to people who didn't live well ending up in the fires of Gehenna. But most people don't understand Gehenna isn't hell. Gehenna was the garbage dump outside of the city of Jerusalem. It smoldered. And he was saying that, you know, people who don't live well, they might as well end up in the garbage dump. That's very different than fire and damnation that has so often been used in the context of Christianity. But it's not part of the teachings of Jesus. Jesus taught the realm of God is within us and it's here around us. The second dimension that's very important to me about the teachings of Jesus is our care for others. Jesus came to bring good news to the poor, proclaim liberty to captives, release and healing, to make people's lives better. Jesus said that our lives will be measured by the moral standard of whether we cared for the poor, whether we fed the hungry, whether we visited prisoners, whether we welcomed immigrants. 
All of those things were measures in the teachings of Jesus about our living well for others. That's critical in the teachings of Jesus. Thirdly, Jesus revealed the face of God as unconditional love, that the essence of God is love. And he conveyed that repeatedly through stories. He told the story of the father who had two sons. The one son was conservative, rigid, judgmental, and the other son lived loosely and was wild and squandered money. And the father welcomed both into his home and was proud of them both. That's the kind of God we, that Jesus portrays. Jesus also told the story of the woman who lost a coin. She tore her house apart looking for that coin. And when she found it, she threw a party. That's also another image of how God relates to us. And then there's the image Jesus offered of the mother hen who gathers the chicks under her wing to keep them warm and safe. That's the image of God that Jesus presents us. The face of God for Jesus is unconditional love. So it's because of this depth of teaching that the realm of God is within us and around us, that the moral code is to care for others, and that God is an unconditional love that sustains us, that I continue to be drawn into Christianity. Yes, I found wealth in other traditions, but I have not found this richness. My path may not be your path. It doesn't need to be. I'm simply sharing what's important to me about the teachings of Jesus and why I still relate with them. But if you're trying to come to understand your path, perhaps you'd like to talk about it and spiritual direction would be a way to do that. So reach out to me. I'm happy to connect with you. Know that I really appreciate the time you spend listening to videos on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, click the bell, share the video with others, leave me some comments, and most of all, have a very good day. Thank you.